Alright, about halfway through repairing this accordion, and you know, last thing I did was put a new key top in here. I did videos and all this, so you could probably go check them out, uh, probably in the description. But it's still in pieces, and while it's still in pieces, I'm going to put in a microphone pickup. And to understand what kind of options I have, I'll be taking a look at uh, what options are available for the guitar. So traditionally, there may be three types of pickups that guitarists use. The first one would be they put a little board down here with little magnetic uh, detectors that'll uh, detect the vibrations of the string and then it'll translate that into an electrical signal which usually for acoustic guitar comes out on the end pin right here. Um, the second technology would be a little piezo thing. Of course not this big or anything like that but the idea is similar. You can see a piezo disc on the inside. It's a shiny part. And what they would do is take, you know, something like that, and they would stick it somewhere on the case. Probably right here or there, you could put it on the underside, and put it on the uh, fingerboard up here. Right, lots of different choices for piezo elements. And the third uh, option would be to use microphone uh, capsules. Which I have here. These are electric microphones which generally are not used in guitars because you need an external bias on them for them to work. Um, but what are used are kind of like dynamic microphones where they have a magnet and a coil, kind of pretty much like how your speaker works. And those will pick up vibrations and then you will send that vibration to electric signals and that goes off into your amp and system, whatever, right? So for this project here, uh, what I'm going to be doing is putting electric microphones in. And this is because this is the only thing I have with me right now. Alright, the hardest part about uh, putting microphones into an accordion is going to be the placement of your microphones. Uh, my ideal setup would be four microphones, one here, one there, uh, one here, one there, so you get stereo, treble, and stereo bass, because these are separate systems, right? You can either place the microphones in the outside Right, so that's past these little levers here. Or you can place it on the inside where the block of reeds are. And that's going to affect your tone quality and all that stuff. And depending on where you place the microphones, you know, that's all going to change. So there's not a whole lot of variables in this project. But um, what I think I'm going to be doing is just taking one capsule and just one. And we're putting on the bass section pointing up towards the treble section. Right, because the issue when you have microphones on both sides is you want your uh, output jacks to be only on one side because you're not collecting cables all over and moving them around, right? You're going to tangle the wires and trip over them. It's not pretty. So uh, you really want your cables only on one side, either the treble or the bass. And to do that, that means you'll have to run the wires from one side to the other. So uh, a simple solution to this is just to put one microphone on the bass section pointing up. And why on the bass section? Well, that's because um, of what I think is the uh, frequency response to these things. These electric microphones love high frequencies and will pick them out uh, much, much better than the low frequencies. But however, this accordion happens to compensate for that because the low frequencies are much louder when you play them than the high frequencies. But that may only be because uh, before I fix this thing, I haven't put this together yet, right? Uh, the bells are a little bit leaky, and so you need a bit more air pressure to force it through uh, these faster vibrating reeds than the lower ones. So that may be why uh, the lower reeds sound to be a little bit louder, but you know, I'm not sure. And so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put a microphone on a bass section, and let's get started. Alright, so the circuit for this is going to be rather straightforward. Uh, the microphone is going to want to bias voltage because these are going to have JFETs that amplify the sound just a bit. And that circuit requires power. That's why you need a, a bias voltage on these microphones. Unlike, uh, you know, dynamic microphones or other types. So the way you're going to do that is through a battery. And that battery compartment is going to have to sit somewhere as well. And I'm thinking just gluing it on the top or the bottom of the case or, you know, what have you. And these will be two double A's or maybe a coin cell, three volts or so. Now, when I build my own amp, I'm going to go ahead and provide my own uh, external voltage to this microphone. So I'm not changing batteries out like every other day and all that stuff. So what I need is a switch 
and I think I've drawn this up so that it works. Uh, what's happening here is if you're on someone else's amplifier, which doesn't give you the external bias voltage, you would have a battery switched in, and you would also have the, uh, well, I've drawn this backwards, but uh, you would have a battery switched in, and you would have a um, capacitor switched in to uh, isolate your voltage here from the amplifier. And if I were to roll my own amplifier, well then I will have my external capacitor inside the amplifier in a bias voltage, uh, you know, already built in because I'm going to build it. Alright, so I have this small setup here where I just wired up the circuit I just had on the paper. Microphone, resistor, capacitor, there's only three things here, so not complicated at all, right? And what I'm doing is feeding the circuit with a variable voltage, uh, which I'm checking on this meter here. So right now it's 1.041 volts is the input voltage on this thing. And the output is monitored by this oscilloscope here. And when I talk you can see that it kind of wiggles. Right? So if you look at the amplitude of this thing, it is basically how big the signal is going into your amplifier. Okay. So, right now the bias voltage is at 1 volt, which is, uh, you know, generally much, much less than what two AA batteries would provide. So, what I'm going to do is slowly crank up the voltage, and you can see what happens on the oscilloscope here. So, my scale, each vertical bar, are going to be 5 millivolts. Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to turn it up here. So, it's 1.044 volts. I'll turn it up to, uh, let's say... I mean, not that far. Let's go to 1.14-ish. How about that? So now if I talk uh, with about the same loudness and at about the same distance from the microphone, uh, you can tell that uh, the amplitude has gone up just a little bit, right? The, the little line squiggles are kind of a little bit taller. And it could continue turning up the voltage. Right, if I turn it up to 1.2 volts, 1.4 volts here, now you can really start to see the difference. Right, and right now it's at 1.4 something or other. And I could keep turning the, the volume up, or the vol not volume, but like the voltage supply up. Now I'm at 2.1 volts, and now you could definitely see that I'm filling almost the whole screen here if I shout into it, right? And two AA batteries are going to be probably operating at one, uh, 3 volts, but as it drains, you know, 2.5 volts is probably going to be close to where it uh, starts to drain and drop out a little bit. So let's uh, crank it up to 3, mm, three volts-ish, right? 2.8 volts. And, oh goodness, a little bit touchy system here. I gotta get a better one. But at 3 volts, you can definitely see that we have a really big signal coming out of there. Well, relatively speaking, right? Because we're only on 5 millivolts of division here. And what your guitar amplifier or whatever is going to do is take this signal and make it even bigger. And that's going to drive a speaker or something like that. Okay, so here's the system right now. I've got the output of this thing hooked up to this gray cable right there. And this cable runs behind my desk and down underneath to this here, and this is channel 1, I've got set up, uh, I've turned the volume to where it's marked so it's about a 7, master is on 7, and that feeds an amplifier which then feeds uh, some speakers over there, and there's one on the other side of the room. And now, I can speak into the mic, like this, and you can kind of hear a little bit of feedback from the speakers. And I can tap it. Now we see the signal there changing and it's coming out of the uh, speakers right there also. Before I begin, I would like to uh, point out that there's a positive side and a negative side uh, to these microphones. If you take a look, one side of this has three little lines right there. What they're doing is connecting the pad to the case. Right? If we took an ohmmeter, you would find that this, uh, the case here, it's metal, right? That is a direct short to the pin right there. Alright, this leg. And the other side is not. It's going to be some resistance, you know, a couple Ks depending on what uh, your microphone is going to be. So, what I want to do is attach the components to the side that is not negative, uh, aka the positive side. And what I've done is just simply made a loop uh, 
on the legs right there and I'm just hooking them over like so and I'll just put it in the uh, little clip here and just solder it up and now it's time to consider where to place this thing and I think I'm going to do it right here like I said before I'm going to have wires running along this block here down the side, around the corner and over here I'm going to drill a small hole enough for the wires to fit through and that is going to lead to that board right there, so a spot right there and then that's going to have wires coming out and I put the headphone jack probably on the bottom somewhere there alright so I gotta take care of this tape first and then I'm gonna drill a hole through the case right here so what I need now is a couple lengths of wire and I measured it out to be roughly this long so I'll just cut uh, three lengths of this wire and you could have done two if I were a little bit smarter and put the resistor on the other end but uh, well it's already been done so I'll take this and just go ahead and measure the same lengths uh, two more times. We're going to strip the ends. So the ends are all stripped and now it's time to attach that to uh, the circuit here. And it's quite simple. I'm going to have one on the ground lead, one on the output, and one on the power. So, what I'll do is take this, give it a twist, and put it on the other one. Let's do this again. Okay, this one's going to be four here. Right, you know, just use it to start out with a hole. And then, let's go ahead and do it. Alright, I've gone ahead and put a little bit of heat shrink over there, so let's just turn the uh, hotter gun on. And then we'll go ahead and shrink uh, this tube up. There we go, you see the shrinking action going on. And it doesn't matter what color you use, this yellow one here is the resistor, black one covers ground, and this other one is just random color, because I didn't want to cut open the box. So that's really it for the side, All right? And if you haven't figured out already, I'm just doing the top circuit here. So I've labeled these with the different colors. This is black. Uh, this battery is going to be red. And this is yellow. And for the output jack, I'll be using this quarter inch stereo jack. And I'm only going to be hooking up one, in, well, one of the uh, rings and sleeves to the signal because I don't need both, right? But this allows me to expand if I ever find it necessary. And as a bonus, if you've never seen these in action on the inside, they're kind of cool. You, know, you take your quarter inch jack, and there's a little spring contact right here, so when you push it in, right, that springs, and that contacts right where the tip, the little notch from the tip is, so right, this isn't going to fall out now. Alright, now it's time to drill a hole for this wire to poke through the uh, backboard inside the accordion. And so you go ahead, you take out your uh, box of drills here, and you pick one that kind of looks right. In this case, I think I'm going to go with this 5.30 seconds. Alright, what I'll do now is put in the hole. This is going to be 5.16 drill bit uh, for this quarter inch jack here. And it's going to go somewhere here. I cleared out some of the tape. So let's get it drilling. Alright, so just probably somewhere there is fine. Alright, our trends of the hole needs to be slightly bigger. This is a 3 8 and we'll try to center it, but we'll see if that happens, right? Alright, drops in perfectly. And now I'll put a hole through uh, this board here for the wires to run through. And I'm going to just line it up somewhere here. There are wires and stuff back there so just make sure you know where you're drilling and you don't drill into them but uh, anywhere here for me is going to be fine 
So I'm going to put a hole right through here. And that's it. We're through. So this wire fits through pretty nicely. And what I'm going to do is pull this through on this side and wire it up before I push it all back into the case and uh, seal it up. So the job now is to figure out which wire goes on where, right? And it's quite easy. So you take a look, there's a tip right there, and I know I have to connect the tip to something else. So the tip touches this clip here, which goes over to the last uh, ring on this connector, and it's connected only to this tag. So I know this tag is the tip. And similarly, the sleeve goes to uh, not this contact here, but this contact directly. So I know that that's what I have to connect it to. So these two tags will be soldered up to uh, two of these three wires. And the other wire will be soldered up to this battery holder. Alright, so I've gone ahead and just hooked the wires up into these little holes. You can see one right there. And now I'll just add a little bit of uh, solder to each of these tags so they stay in place. So what I've got here is the, the positive of the battery connected to the red wire. Uh, the black goes to the ground with the other one. And the yellow goes to the tab on the sides. Alright, so there's the hole I drilled, right there, and here is the jack, but I can't fit this in because there's this piece of wood right next to it that is uh, just a little bit too thick. So, I have to get rid of that so this jack fits in flush, uh, the bottom of it flush with this surface here, and that way I can actually take the nut on the outside and thread it through, or else it just comes to the surface and none of the threads stick through to the outside. So I have to figure out how to get rid of this piece of wood right here. So when I took a drill and just drilled a small hole right there and I was able to snap this off with my finger. I mean this accordion is old and I'm not worried about breaking it at all. So this is totally fine by me. All right, so this jack here does poke out through the wood but it's just so slightly too short that I can't put the washer on, or not the washer, the, uh, the nut on there. So what I'm going to do is probably take a little bit of this material out with the countersink. Uh, just kind of like this. And, I don't know, that should knock some of the sharp edges off. So I can actually put this uh, through and get a... There we are, it looks a lot better. And all right, and now I still have uh, this mess hanging out, right? So this is, let's see, can you see it? Yep. Gonna be routed probably like this and up this way. Actually, let's just do this right now. Uh, let's hot glue this in place. And if you want to service this, well, nah, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so a little bit of hot glue. Let that cool. I'm going to tag this down as well, right about here. I'm going to let that cool uh, before I try to route the rest of this up along the top of here. But you can see I have enough wire to reach maybe approximately the center and that's going to be good enough. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back. Alright, it's been like a minute and a half, but now I'm going to route this wire up uh, probably this way. And well, it doesn't quite reach, but <laughs> uh, that's going to be good enough, I guess, wherever it is, you know, I'll just glue it down. So, uh, let's see, I will tag it down again right here on the corner. And then again, I will uh, tag it down right close to where I'm going to mount it, like this. Alright. Alright, definitely make sure none of this uh, hot glue gets on your reeds or you're going to have lots of issues. Alright, and here's a quick test. All I've done is put in two batteries right there. 
And I guess I should have put in a switch here, but you know, that's a, you could do that afterwards. You could do it whenever you want. The main part is this microphone is now set in here. And I've got hooked up to the sound system I did before. And there you go. It works like a charm. One issue that you may still encounter with a setup like this is that when your bellows close, a lot of the air is going to be rushing through it, so you're going to get a whole lot of wooden noise, right? And to reduce that, I'll just take a little bit of foam. I think this one came out of a chair or something similar. And I'll cut a piece big enough and, you know, you wrap it in uh, kind of like that. And you tape it down, glue it down, do whatever you need to do to keep it down. Uh, and then, you know, that's good to go. Maybe it's not that tall, but, you know, you get the idea. And this is what it ends up looking like. I just made like a little bridge over the microphone. Because uh, these microphones are unidirectional. They only point upwards so you know that should knock down some of the noise and I'm hoping that it's good enough and if it's not good enough you know I'll go back and do it again but uh, I'm gonna now put the case back together and we'll see how this sounds alright so I'm not gonna plug this in yet but I'm gonna play a little bit and then I'll plug it back in and we'll see how it sounds so this is just the uh, just the lower read and let's just do the medium. Let's go with just the high. You know, some leaky D flat over there, but you know, I'll deal with that in a bit. And let's try the bass section. and see how it sounds. Our right, quick note here, um, this doesn't close all the way, we're left with maybe an eighth of an inch gap right here. Uh, which is acceptable if you don't care too much, but uh, the, the issue is here, uh, we've got the reed block on the treble side and the reed block on the bass side. And with the microphone inside, it's just that much too thick to close together. So, uh, I think what I want to do is move the microphone uh, over. Mm -hmm. And instead of having it here, well you can't put it here either because I'm assuming it meshes together where the uh, larger reeds are going to be here and the smaller over there on the treble side. So instead, uh, I think I'm going to have to move them here or here. But, I mean, this is just a matter of moving the glue over a little bit and, I mean, that's it. So, if you want to accept that, uh, you're going to be resting your reed blocks on the mic a little bit. You know, whatever, that's fine. If not, then you would want to move it. So, that's just a quick note. But otherwise, um, this project is done. While well, it's added, I just folded that wire back and attached that to the side of the base block right there. 
So I left these batteries in the accordion for was it a day and a half or so, and uh, these are pretty much gone. Right? That one's at 0.8 volts, down from 1.5, uh, and this is at like nothing, <laughs> down from 1.5. Now there usually uh, shouldn't be an imbalance like this in a series connected, you know, battery thing, but I don't know, something could have gone wrong there. Uh, these I put in, these are fresh. I put these in about 25, 30 minutes ago and I played uh, about 20 minutes of accordion into speakers and these are still more than fresh. We're at 1.5 volts and that one is more than one point, yeah, so these are pretty much still fresh. So somewhere between uh, 20 minutes and a day and a half, these batteries drain. So I would recommend either putting a switch in line with the uh, power or just make a better circuit. But for now, this is going to be just fine for me because I'm probably going to power it off of like a, a wall source. Um, when I'm just recording stuff into my computer, but you know, other than that, uh, this seems to work reasonably well.